I'm gonna teach you 10 new underrated effect ideas that you can make inside of After Effects. Let's go. Quick disclaimer, you need to know how to rotoscope and 3D camera track inside of After Effects. I've linked to two videos right here, which will teach you how to do that. Let's go. First effect, Chroma Ghost Trail. Shout out to Asim, he put me onto this effect. First up, rotoscope out your subject's hand. Apply the CC threshold effect and adjust it until you get a nice outline. Next, apply the echo effect. Change echo time to negative 0.05, number of echoes to six, and echo operator to screen. Turn on the visibility of your bottom layer. Add a glow effect. I'm going to use Sapphire Glow, but you can use After Effects Glow as well. Next, apply VC Color Vibrance from Video Copilot. This is a free plugin that you can get down below, but if you don't want to get it, you can use Hue Saturation. I'm changing this color to a red color. Next, apply VR Chromatic Aberrations. Last time I'm gonna apply a directional blur. I'm gonna change the direction to 90, increasing the blur length to 100. And there you have it, a crazy echo ghost trail. Next is this warp glow camera shake. First create a new adjustment layer and trim it down to exactly one frame. Drag it evenly between two clips so that it serves as your transition. Now the fastest way to create this transition is using our essential transitions V3 camera shake pack. You literally just drag and drop any warp transition that you like and boom, instantly we have a crazy transition. There's over 40 essential presets in this pack and it'll actually make your transitions look insane with just one click so if you want to check it out it's linked below but for those of you who don't have my pack here's how you make it from scratch first apply cc repetile change all the expand values to 3000 change tiling to unfold next add turbulent displace change amount and size to 160 go to the middle of the adjustment layer and hit a keyframe at amount and size go to the ends and change them back down to zero hit the u keyframe on your adjustment layer to see these keyframes make sure it's zero on the edges and 160 in the center right click all of these keyframe assistant and easy ease to make it a smoother effect next add vr chromatic aberrations do the same thing with the red and blue aberration negative 10 in the middle zeros on the edges next apply the transform effect at the beginning of the clip hit a keyframe at scale and position go to the end of the clip and do the exact same thing now at the center of our adjustment layer we're going to zoom out just a little bit maybe to around like 60 go five to six frames before the center and hit another keyframe at the position then we're going to go two frames in we're going to move it up we're going to go a few frames after we're going to move it down and most importantly turn shutter composition angle off and change the shutter angle to 160 that way we have some motion blur now depending on your clip you can move these keyframes around i'm going to move them closer together just so that we have some more natural movement then apply a glow effect i'm going to go ahead and go to the center right here i'm going to increase the intensity to like one point three hit a keyframe there go to the very beginning change the intensity back down to zero go to the end of the clip and then change that intensity back down to zero again then i'm going to increase that radius up a bunch to like maybe 200 ish also my bad i realized i messed up delete the keyframes on the size just make sure the size stays permanent at 160 and there we have a crazy warp glow camera shake effect you can make the effect any color you want by changing the glow colors to a and b colors and setting the a color to like any color red blue green and there you have it Next is this trippy threshold black and white effect. Obviously rotoscope out your subject, apply a CC threshold effect right here and then adjust it until you get a nice outline. Search for VR chromatic aberrations or you can apply the quick aberrations three which is also a free plugin by plugin everything. Change the position to like eight and then increase the stylistic blur to like 23. Lastly, apply a glow. I'm gonna use sapphire glow but you can use the after effects glow of course. Turn on your bottom layer and there we have it. Next is this floating 3D object transition and it's actually made without any blender or cinema 4D. For this effect you actually have to shoot your shots a certain way so you can see i just grabbed my shoe right here put it on a green screen and hung it from like a string and then just literally spun it around just like that then what i did was i added a mask around it the string is masked out and the rest of the scene and then i added a green screen effect right here so i removed all the green screen and then what i did was i created this background i took a photo literally of my background and animated it to go up and then it pauses and like kind of slows down so that's literally the background and then when i turn on the visibility of this right here ta-da we have this crazy looking floating shoe object but the key to this effect is actually the time remapping and making it look aesthetic and move fast and then slow so what i'm going to do for that is i'm going to hit command d to duplicate this layer hold shift to make sure it snaps to the end right here i first make sure the shoe does a full rotation and then i make sure i have to line it up exactly at that exact frame so i'm just going to go ahead right here the drop down i might trim this a little bit down and once that cut looks seamless command d to duplicate it one more time and now that we have a long enough spinning clip of our object and you can do this with whatever object you want it doesn't have to be a shoe 
I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna right click them and I'm gonna hit pre-compose and then make sure I move all attributes into new layer. And now for the fun part, I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna hit time, enable time remapping. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go maybe a couple frames right here until it gets to a good angle of the shoe right here. I'm going to hit a keyframe and I'm gonna drag it way closer to the beginning. And to make it even smoother, hit the graph editor and easy ease the keyframe so it spins really fast and slows down. Now for all the fun effects, I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna search for the Sapphire Warp Chroma and apply that so it looks very telescopic. And then I'm gonna search for a directional blur and apply this directly to our pre-comp right here. At the end, when it slows down, I'm gonna hit the blur length at zero, but at the very beginning, I wanna make it really fast and make it look like it's moving. Now it starts off blurry and slows down. And there you have a floating 3D object effect made completely practical. Next up is adding easy floating 3D objects to your scene. And this is a 3D model file that you can animate completely inside of After Effects with no Blender or Cinema 4D. So I've just imported this 3D GLB of this Lean Cup, which is a free download from my website. So if you wanna get it, you can get it linked down below in the description. And as you can see, I have all the 3D controls that I need to basically animate this. So I can basically go ahead and scale this down and then reposition it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the drop down on it. If I hit transform, you can see we have all the exact same keyframe position values. And now if I just go ahead and like move farther in the timeline, move it around and just like the rotation and whatnot, we have this crazy looking 3D floating lean cup, which is honestly really cool. And you can of course just go ahead and duplicate this as many times as you like to make whatever cool effects you want. But for those of you who wanna save the time of having to animate everything, we actually have a floating 3D lean cup animation that's already pre-made in our floating 3D city objects pack. All you have to do is key out the green screen right here. And you can see if we drag it around, we have a bunch of pre-animated lean cups right here, which are just super easy to use if you want. And to make it even more realistic, add a Lumetri color effect and maybe turn up the temperature a little bit so that it blends with the color. And I also recommend adding a Gaussian blur effect to this so that we have this cool like depth of field effect. And there you have it, a floating 3D objects effect. Before we go into the next effect, if you ever hated when you're editing a music video and every cut just feels a little bit offbeat and you always have to manually listen to it so that the edit is perfectly to the beat, we just released a brand new AI music video editor plugin for Premiere Pro, which lets you import your music track and your performance take. And it'll automatically edit a rough draft of your entire music video to the beat of any song using its automatic beat detector. It also has a built-in visual effects applier that'll add visual effects at the click of a button. Many of the effects which are from this tutorial actually. So if you want to check it out or any of the other overlay assets, they're all linked down below in the description. Anyways, let's get back to the tutorial. Next up is this crazy match cut transition. To make it, it's really easy. All you have to do is go through a music video with a bunch of clips of your subject. We're going to choose a subject that is constantly present throughout multiple frames. So in this case, I'm going to choose Molly Santana's eyes. I'm going to hit command shift D right here on this layer. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to hit time and then I'm going to hit freeze frame right here. So that freezes the clip. Then I'm going to go through the rest of the entire music video right here and find clips where her eyes are also visible. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Do this until you have about four to five frames of your subject. Now that I have all the clips right here of her eyes, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure they all line up in the exact same position. So how am I going to do this? And I have to drop down, hit the drop down on transform and then turn down the opacity of the top layer so you can see through it. And then you can go ahead and just take your scale and rotation and do whatever you need to make sure that her eyes line up in the exact same position of the frame, just like that. I might even adjust the rotation just a bit so that's an exact perfect position. And now you can see if we toggle the opacity, her eyes are in the exact same spot. Basically do this for all your clips and once they're all aligned, go ahead and align them in a nice staircase pattern so that they all cut evenly between each other. Once that's done, go ahead and right click it, pre-compose and make sure you move all attributes into the new comp. Hit okay and we're gonna trim this layer down. And then if you want it to move a little bit faster because sometimes it might be a little bit slow, you can go ahead and decrease the stretch to something like maybe like 60% so that way we have a faster animation of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and hold shift and scale up the entire composition so that her eyes are completely visible and there's no black edges throughout the entire transition. I'm going to hit command D on this pre-comp, duplicate it maybe two times just so that we have a longer transition and let's drag that right here in between our two clips and there we go. We have a pretty good base start for our eye transition match cut effect. However, there's still a lot more we can do to spice it up. One thing you might notice is that it's still pretty blurry since we've kind of scaled up everything by a lot. So what I'm going to do to hide this is I'm going to go to my newspaper mixed media effect. I have this paper overlay that I made, which has this like cool stop motion paper texture. I'm going to drag and drop a Lumetri color effect to it and then increase the exposure. Stay with me. Then I'm going to go ahead and trim it down only to the duration of the match cut effect so that the uh, paper overlay is only showing over the match cut. I'm going to change the blending mode over here to overlay. And there we have it, a dope match cut slash mixed media effect. Next is this crazy random flash effect. Shout out to Tiny Tapes. He put me on this one. This one's really easy to make. Basically have two clips right here. You're going to duplicate one of those layers by hitting command D and then you're just going to go ahead and drag it to maybe like about, I don't know, like five and then cut it down maybe to like one to two seconds in between the next clip. Then what you're going to do is you're going to right click it and you're going to hit 
time and you're gonna hit enable time remapping right here. So right now it looks standard just like that. So it has like three cuts like this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the time remap, hit a keyframe at this first very beginning frame. Then we're gonna go to the center and we're gonna increase that time to like another random part in the video. By the way, this effect works best if you already like edited a full music video and then have a bunch of clips. And then you can go ahead and just decrease that time back to like another random value in the music video. And then if you play it out, we kind of have this crazy looking flash effect. There's some frames right here that have like these black bars. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scale that up just like that. And yeah, now we have this crazy looking flash effect, but to spice it up even more, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'm actually gonna apply a Sapphire Warp Chroma effect just cause I think it looks cooler. You don't have to do this, but in my opinion, it's the best. Make sure that adjustment layer is above all layers. Lastly, I'm gonna apply another adjustment layer right here. I'm gonna go to my effects and presets. I'm gonna search for my essential transitions camera shake pack. I'm gonna drag and drop maybe a warp flash right here. I'm gonna try this blue one and then adjust it so that the hit is exactly on the cut. And now if we play it out, boom, we have this crazy warp flash transition pack. By the way, this pack is completely native in After Effects, no need for Sapphire or third-party plugins. Lastly, if you want, you can add a After Effects directional blur, set it to whatever direction you want it to move and just increase that blur length to something like 124. And voila, there we have this crazy random cuts transition. This effect right here has recently been a hit. It's the Y2K Fruitiger Metro effect. To make it, it's super easy. And I will be using some overlays from my Fruitiger Metro pack at 11%.net. So if you want to check it out, it's linked down below. 4K overlays. It has 90 plus files all in 4K pre-animated. Super easy to use. They're all transparent and they're super easy to use. But if you don't have the pack, I'm sure you can Google some overlays and grab some screenshots. Now there's two versions of this effect. There's a 2D one and a 3D one. For my first 2D version, I'm just going to drag and drop one of the pre-animated background overlays right here. I actually have to go ahead and scale it down because it's in 4K. But you can see if we play it out instantly, we have a Fruitiger Metro effect. And if you want to spice it up even more, add a threshold effect to your subject right here. And then you can adjust it so we have an even more retro style looking effect. I made a tutorial on this effect before, but one thing I didn't go over in that video was creating a like VHS overlay to it. So it's really easy. You just create a new adjustment layer, search for the channel blur effect and apply that to your adjustment layer. This is a really minute detail, but you can just go ahead and increase that red blurriness just a little bit. And maybe the blue value as well. I'd also add some Venetian blinds, turn off the stopwatch animation, change the width to two and change the transition completion to 7%. And lastly, add a glow. I'm gonna add the sapphire glow again. I'm gonna decrease that brightness. And there we have a Fruitiger Metro effect with this VHS effect. The second way to make this effect is gonna tie into our next effect as well. So I'm gonna turn off this adjustment layer and the background layer. First, click your bottom most layer. We're gonna go to the tracker panel right here and track camera. Once it's done loading, you should be able to see the 3D flowers. If you don't see them, make sure you check this button right here. Now I made a new 3D camera layer. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my Fruitiger Metro pack. I'm gonna go to the individual assets right here. I'm gonna drag in one of these transparent animations. For example, this flower animation right here. I'm gonna turn the visibility of our rotoscope layer on so that the animation is behind Molly. And now I'm gonna click this cube icon right here and you can see it now completely distorted the position of it, but that's because this layer is now in 3D space. So the cool thing about this is that I can place it in the background as if it's actually in the video. I can of course scale it up, adjust the rotation and position. I'm gonna keep it behind Molly like that and turn off the render track points. And just for fun, I'm gonna add a sapphire glow to it so it just stands out more. And there we have this crazy looking fruiter animation behind our subject. Keep doing this for as many assets as you like until you have a fire effect. Our next effect is the paper mixed media effect. This is the same tactic from our Fruitiger Metro effect. So we have a bunch of mixed media assets from our mixed media overlay pack right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the key light. I simply just go ahead and key out the green screen and turn this into a 3D object as well. Then I can adjust the scale position and rotation to have this crazy looking mixed media effect. I always recommend adding this paper overlay right here and then changing the blend mode to overlay. Add a posterized time effect to your video and change the frame rate to 12 frames per second. And that way we have this crazy stop motion effect. Lastly is this trippy random masking effect. To make this first and foremost, rotoscope out your subject. Then hit command D to duplicate your background layer one more time. Grab your pen tool and draw a rough mask around any object. So I'm gonna divide the shelf and wall. Once you create the mask, right click the bottom layer, click time, enable time remapping and do the same effect. Keyframe at the beginning, keyframe at the end, go to the end, adjust the timestamp to a random point, add a directional blur, increase the blur length to 70 and halfway through hit command shift D to split that mask layer, hit the drop down, hit the drop down on mask and invert the mask. So that way the effect alternates and there you guys have it, 10 new effect ideas that you can use for your next video project. Let me know down below which one was your favorite.